Hello, I'm Lee and welcome to iMindBlocks. Today's video I'll be doing an update on the Project Zero Micro Miner and Micro Stake device. So I put out a video um, about this project um, just over a week ago and um, I got lots of really good feedback from you guys so I really appreciate that, thanks for all your support. Um, and this is a, a video update about that project. So it's been a long and very difficult week for me. Um, obviously I'm normally making videos and working on my business and all sorts of things like that. So this um, project has really been me taking kind of time out to focus on this thing. And um, it's actually been a lot more work than I expected. I thought I'd just, you know, whack a couple of miners on an SD stick and uh, SD card, sorry, and um, we'll be up and running plain sailing. Um, it's actually been much more difficult uh, than that. Uh, the miners have not been too bad, it's been a little bit tricky getting them compiled and things like that, but the staking has been really, really difficult. It kind of takes me back to the old days of like, you know, my first uh, computers when you didn't have enough memory and stuff to like run your games. And that's kind of like the same sort of challenges as what you face with this device. Um, because you've only got a single core one gigahertz uh, processor, it's a 32-bit processor, and also the minimal amount of uh, RAM on board, it's only 512 megabytes of RAM as well. So that makes it quite tricky to work with, especially when you kind of want to put our, uh, you know, full nodes on these things. Miners is not so much a problem, but stake has been really quite difficult. Um, but anyway, so I just want to show you um, a close-up look at a device, um, kind of the, the package, what I'm thinking of putting together. Um, I'd like to show you it's sort of mining and also staking, and just kind of show you guys exactly, what, you know, what the current um, offering is and see you guys uh, get some feedback on it, see what you guys uh, think um, overall. So first of all, let's take a look at the uh, device when it's uh, mining. So we'll do a screen capture now. Uh, what I'm going to do is just use uh, PuTTY to open up a terminal and basically directly access uh, the device itself, the micro miner itself, and I'll show you how it is up and running when it mines. So we've just opened up a SSH terminal. Like I say, we're using PuTTY, that's what I use. Uh, there's other uh, various options, but that doesn't really matter. We've already added our username in the um, as, a, as part of the login. By the way, this is super simple and easy stuff. I'll guide you through all the process if any of you guys pick one of these up. And then we just enter our password. And then you're at the main um, like bash terminal with the command prompt. From here, you can enter your various commands. So in the previous section or overnight, I've been mining a magic coin. Um, so that's one of the miners that I've got running on it. So far, I've got the uh, Varian miner running and the CPU miner multi, which supports a, a really wide range of um, algorithms and also the Magi uh, coin miner as well. So if we go into the folder for the Magi coin, and then we're just gonna start the miner. So basically it's the call to the miner, the mining pool, um, I use uh, details for the pool and the E is how much um, processor power we want to use. So we're gonna use 100%. And then that starts the miner. So just like your normal uh, mining uh, consoles, starts up, connects to the pool, and then starts mining uh, from there onwards. Um, on screen as well, I'll just quickly show you, I've got a notepad over here. So you can see uh, this is my various uh, testing and bits and pieces. So like I say, I've already got the um, Raycoin, uh, sorry, Varian miner running. And using a CPU miner, I've been able to benchmark all of these uh, other algorithms and also the M7M uh, Magic Wire Miner. So I've been working really hard and I wanted to try and kind of make it as usable as possible for this device. So it's not necessarily the fastest, but I think it's gonna be very efficient. And also I want to kind of encourage people to kind of get involved with using, you know, uh, Linux like the Raspberry M and, and just get involved and uh, understand a little bit more about um, how miners connects to pools and also the commands and stuff involved just so so it's not just a you know just a mining product it's also slightly educational as well but without going too mad um as you guys know from my videos and things like that um, i do like to keep these things um really simple as you can see there now that the miner has started up on screen uh we've got fred zero which is yeah it has one fred and uh the first bunch of hashes come through, so 0.7 kilo hashes when mining uh, Magic Coin. And obviously that miner will continue um, onwards from there. Okay, so just as that miner was running, this is the device, the hardware itself. So in the previous video, I showed you with everything uh, plugged in, but this is kind of all you need to have plugged in if you're gonna use uh, like the remote shell to uh, log in, the SSH shell. Um, so it's just the device there, we've got the SD card plugged in on the right hand side and then this uh, micro USB uh, is only providing power. It's not actually a data link, it's just purely providing power. So it's plugged into my hub um, over there. 
Um, but we could also use something like this. So I've just got this uh, Pebble uh, battery power supply. It's actually quite sort of um, overkill. You wouldn't really need that much um, to power it. You could also run it from like a solar panel or any USB charger, um, anything like that at all. So this is really just to show you, um, once it's all sort of up and running and configured, uh, you only need a USB power connector and then you can log in remotely or just leave it uh, running completely standalone. So the next part I'll show you is um, the device when it's um, set up for a staking. So uh, an important kind of thing I was debating goes about some forwards between having a all-in-one device, so a staker and a miner, but the reality is it's much better to have them as two separate devices, or you know, one is a staker and one is a miner, rather than combine it all into one. Technically, it's possible to have them all into one, um, but for security and also you know overall stability and things like and like your practicality as well, um, I think it's better to have either a miner or a staker. So um, in the future, I'll probably put a guide together where you can do both. But I think uh, when it comes to kind of bundling these up for like, you know retail sort of purposes, I'm going to sell them uh, as separate devices. But with Having that said, um, I'll show you what the staking sort of side of things uh, looks like now. Okay, so now showing you the software, which is a Raspbian, and we are running the Neblio staking wallet. So I had a really hard time finding a staking uh, node and wallet that would run on this device. So I tried um, Status, Navcoin, MuCoin, I, think, I don't think I got around to Peercoin, and one or two others. Um, really difficult because of the, uh, you know, the, the device configuration, like I say, with that sort of a relatively slow uh, CPU core, single core 32 thread, uh, 32 bit CPU, and also the very low memory, it was really hard. Um, I almost got Stratis running, in fact, I did get it running, but what happened is it then kind of like fell back, it couldn't quite keep up with the blockchain download, um, so unfortunately that, that fell behind. Um, I wasn't able to run that. So in the end, I've gone with uh, Neblio, it was the um, the full staking wallet that I could get running, run stable. Um, uh, the rewards um, appear to be quite good, although I'm yet to confirm it. You can see it on the screen, which is, you know, you'll see it here, but to, it, it's to my side there. Um, so what I've done is, and I've only had it running for a very short period of time, uh, so just over 24 hours. Uh, if you, when you deposit funds, it's a, there's a minimum um, 24 hour period before the, the staking becomes active. So I've only just started that. Um, and what's happening now is if I go down in the bottom right hand corner where those little kind of stack of coins are, you should see a little notification. So as our balance is kind of held on the network, it's building up over time and it will start earning a staking reward. Um, so this reward has been picking up. I haven't earned any income yet, but I say it's only really been about 36 hours in total. Um, and that should, oh, probably helps if I select the wallet and then go down to the coins. Um, you should see our staking weight and also the, the expected time before we earn a reward. Um, and this has been increasing um, each time I keep checking on it. So yeah, you can see yeah, the weight is now 65 and time to earn a reward is 20 days. Um, at this moment in time, I don't know exactly what that reward will be. So I'll update that uh, in the future and let you guys know. Uh, but you can also see in the top right hand corner, you can see the um, CPU load. You can also check the memory. I think it uses around about 300 megabytes of memory, um, but it's fully synced up running. So that's really good for our staking node. Um, and like I say, you could add in the uh, the miner, but you know, the staking node is kind of using up quite a lot of the resources already. So adding in the miner and also the security risk, I just don't think it's um, a good option. So these will be separate devices. Um, okay, so now let's take a closer look at the hardware itself and kind of the package that I'm kind of thinking of putting together, basically like a starter kit. Um, so you guys can take a closer look at that and tell me what you guys uh, think. Okay guys, so let's take a close up look at the hardware and everything that's gonna be included in this package. So we've already uh, focused quite a few times on the micro miner, micro staker. This is this device here and it's the, your primary piece of hardware. We've also got a 32 gigabyte Kingston class 10 uh, micro SD card and a USB to micro USB uh, power adapter. So you can use that power adapter, you can just plug it into any USB charger, a USB port, uh, USB solar panel, battery, whatever you like, and that will power the device perfectly um, adequately. So the other thing that I was thinking of is this is really gonna be like a bare bones package and I think that's gonna come at a slightly later date. The reason being is um, to get the, the device kind of configured initially, there's a couple of accessories that I think are gonna be important and I think everyone probably should have. Um, I don't think a lot of you guys are gonna have these already. So what I thought would be a good idea is to kind of have a full kind of um, starter kit. 
So in the starter kit itself is a, an adapter. So it's HDMI to micro HDMI. So that is what the device has. It has a micro HDMI slot. So I don't think people are gonna have a uh, micro HDMI cable. So I think you're gonna need one of those. There is a micro USB to full size USB. So you're gonna need that if you wanna plug in a USB uh, keyboard or something, for example. These are particularly important if you want to do um, the first setup. So for example, when you want to configure the device using your Wi-Fi, really you're gonna need a keyboard and display to set up that Wi-Fi. Once the Wi-Fi is set up, then you can use your um, PuTTY secure shell to log in and manage it remotely from, from anywhere you like. But for that very first part, you will need um, these if you don't have them already at home. So next up we have a few other accessories and these are really just kind of um, extra add-ons to make the device look pretty, help it run a little bit cooler and kind of uh, complete the package. So here we have a, a GPIO header. Um, I've just included this piece here. The reason being is because when you order these devices, if you order them in singles, the GPIO header is not um, pre-attached. But if you want to order them in bulk, you have to order them with uh, the GPIO header um, already pre-soldered onto the device. So I've just kind of included that there really more as a reference. Um, here we have the acrylic blue case. So we've got a top and a bottom, and then we've got the fixing screws and a couple of uh, nylon kind of um, pieces just to kind of um, space those out, make everything uh, look nice. And we have a screwdriver for obviously building the piece together. So the other thing I was gonna ask as well was uh, whether you guys would prefer to kind of receive it all in like kick form, um, particularly with the case and also the heat sink, which is gonna be included as well. Would you rather it's kind of loose like this or would you rather it be already basically pre-built and put on um, pretty much like I showed you in the original pictures? Would you rather do that yourself or would you, um, you know, rather that was done for you? It's super easy to do. Um, and I think people might quite like that building kind of aspect of it. So um, I think we'll probably will leave it loose, but I just want to kind of get some feedback um, on that. Um, okay guys, so that's what I'm thinking. So I think we're gonna do like an all-inclusive kit. So basically everything that you see um, here will be all in one kit. And in the future, there'll just be like a bare bones kind of option for people that maybe already have some accessories or want to just start with the, the bare basic. Okay guys, so if you like this device and you want to know more about it, all you need to do is email me. It's riskyfire2 at gmail.com um, and I'll keep you guys um, updated as, as the project develops. I think we're probably quite close to uh, releasing the project now. Um, I expect maybe probably just one more week. I'll have everything uh, ready, a website, all the specs, uh, power consumption, all that kind of stuff. So that will all be coming in. Like I say, if you want to stay updated, then just uh, email me is the best way to do it. Uh, okay, thanks very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you guys on the next video.